Well, hello everybody. I am Louise Eddington, um, the Cosmic Owl of Cosmic Owl Astrology. And today I bring you my weirdly cosmic podcast for the Gemini New Moon that will be on May the 30th, 2022. But before I do, a quick thing about me. I'm um, a soul astrologer, the author of three books. First one, Modern Astrology. Second one, The Complete Guide to Astrology. And now my new book, The Complete Guide to Tarot and Astrology. Okay, so I would invite you to check all my books out, um, give, um, buy them, <laughs> give me a review on, I, on um, Amazon, with no matter where you bought them, because Amazon reviews really help uh, visibility. Um, I also offer consultations and I have a wonderful Venus Enchantment community where I offer, it's kind of like my Patreon, where for $23 a month, um, I offer two group calls a month, almost daily um, kind of video forecasts, if you like, energy forecasts, updates, where I also offer a bit of teaching in there. And also, um, I, you know, I teach you astrology in there, and I do a month ahead forecast and lots of other little bits too. So come check me out in uh, the um, details below or on my website, louiseeddington.com, L-O-U-I-S-E-E-D-I-N-G-T-O-N.com. Now then, so we're going to be looking at the uh, <clears throat> Gemini new moon, as I said, which will be at nine degrees, three minutes. But before we do, I pulled a card, as I usually do. And I pulled the Tower card. Ooh, and the Tower card normally kind of um, sends chills down the spines of everybody when we pick it. So it's a card that can elicit fear. I'm going to read you from my book when it shows up in a reading. This card is the Mars card. OK, it's a fiery card. And like Mars, the planet associated with this card, it's not always the easiest of energies. As the change heralded by Mars and the tower can be sudden and aggressive. However, looking at a deeper meaning of this card, um, chaos and change are part of life and sometimes change comes quickly. This card topples shaky foundations and Mars likes fast action. However, we must remember that Mars is also a protector, a guard, and a warrior. If foundations are not solid, they often need rebuilding. So think of this card as the breakdown before a breakthrough, leading to rebuilding something more lasting. Now, I'm going to look at the chart, and I'm going to say that a lot of what I'm going to talk about today will apply to the USA, because there's a lot going on, particularly here. But also, um, it's all connected with um, Russia, Ukraine as well. Um, it, it may kind of get a little bit political, but only from what I'm seeing through the astrology. But let's look at the astrology chart. Okay. Now, remember, this is destructuring de of old forms to rebuild, to restructure new forms. And here we have a, a new moon at nine degrees of Gemini. And I'll talk about what that means as well. We're also coming, this is the first new moon, the start of the next lunar cycle after a big eclipse season. As I record this on May the 16th, we've just had a very massive total lunar eclipse at 25 degrees Scorpio. That was like almost 90 minutes long in totality. I unfortunately didn't get to see it because it was cloudy, but, um, but certainly felt it. It was draining. It kind of drained a lot of power out of us. And we could feel the surge and purging, as I called it. OK, now then, from when I recorded my last podcast episode for that, um, for the lunar eclipse, we had not had the leak of the Supreme Court um, potential ruling of overruling um, Roe versus Wade. Now, why do I think this is important to this new moon? Because in between times we had this, and this is a Gemini new moon. 
which is communication and links. And it's also ideas and perceptions. Now, Gemini New Moon is Mercury ruled and Mercury is stationing direct just four days after this new moon. So not only do we have a new moon that's at nine degrees, which is completion, endings and new beginnings. We also have the ruler of the new moon changing direction and it's a Gemini new moon and Gemini is a mutable sign, which is change in itself. So this is change, 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 all right. So I'll talk in greater depth at, about what all that means. Some of the little highlights that you may notice if you're on video, if not, uh, Mars has moved into Aries by the time of this new moon. Um, as I record, Mars is about to be conjunct Neptune in Pisces, but by ne this new moon, Mars will have moved into his own sign of Aries. And Mars is actually um, later in the year going to go retrograde, retrograde in Gemini. So there's a lot Mars, the card, Gemini, changing directions, sudden change. You can see this picture building up. Mars is conjunct Jupiter in Aries and Jupiter expands everything. So that is kind of quite assertive and quite aggressive. All right. Now Mars is also Mars is also in square, Mars and Jupiter in Aries, in square to Black Moon Lilith and Ceres in Cancer on this uh, new moon. Talk about what that means. Um, and we've also got Hygieia at three degrees Scorpio in an almost exact quincunx to um, Mars and Jupiter in Aries. And um, um, Hygieia in Scorpio is very much to do with health, holistic health, but more specifically reproductive health. So between now, the day I record it, um, uh, the day of the lunar eclipse really, and this new moon on May the 30th, I think there's, the, there's gonna be more coming out about women's reproductive health. And I'm gonna go even further because um, we've got a lot of change coming up in many ways, all right? Um, okay, so I'm gonna stop the share because I I'm going to mention some other aspects, but I, I, you know, I just want you to kind of listen to me a little bit and not necessarily just focus on the picture. So Gemini, nine degrees. Gemini is um, change, communication, the media, it's our voice, it's perceptions. And as I said, nine is the number of completion. Okay, but it's also the new beginnings. So in uh, nine is the last of the single digit numbers and the highest in value. It's symbolically represents a culmination of wisdom and experience and buzzes with the energy of both endings and new beginnings, all right? So it's really kind of uh, feels like hmm, surrendering to something inevitable um, or something's inevitable end and seizing opportunities for new beginnings. So not only is it a new moon and it's that means it's the end of a, a cycle that began with the new moon eclipse early in May, um, the solar eclipse, it's also the ending of that initial eclipse period which will reverberate for months but it's also the beginning again of new. So this has so many endings, so many new beginnings. Now then, with all this Gemini and with Mercury being the ruling planet of Gemini and Mercury about station direct, Mercury is gonna station direct at 26 degrees Taurus. And that is uh, conjunct the degree of a lunar eclipse so it's on November the 19th. 2021. Um, it's also conjunct the point where the sun was on today's eclipse. And Tor uh, that's at 26 Taurus. And Taurus is very much about the body, the physical values, 
all that kind of stuff going on. Hmm, what picture are we building up here? The new moon at nine degrees Gemini is also in square to Juno. Juno um, in mythology represented the rights of women and children. Now she was married to Jupiter or Zeus, who is conjunct Mars here in Aries and who um, is attacking the rights of women and children, women and children, if you like. Um, Zeus or Jupiter was a bit of a hound dog and uh, Juno kind of did her own thing, um, often portrayed as long suffering, but really, you know, it was the tale as old as time of um, controlling um, the female or controlling the divine feminine, if you like, in the physical form and also spiritually. Now, this kind of worries me really that this number, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, this, this really um, does concern me. And I see it as something that is happening globally, not just with Roe versus Wade in the USA. Um, there's um, a, a lot of connections between the GOP and the Supreme Court justices and Trump and, um, and Putin and Russia. And uh, Putin um, is, a right, is an authoritarian as well. He's um, definitely against LBGTQ rights. Um, the Russian soldiers are raping women. There's Alexander Dugin, who is uh, basically the author of a lot of um, Putin's actions in his book, The Foundations of Geopolitics. He's an interesting guy if you wanna look him up. He calls us Babylon in the West. And this is basically, to put it mildly, what's going on in our um, world is a rise of authoritarianism and, and a return to a kind of originalist, patriarchal, strict, controlling ownership um, kind of views by oligarchs and all kinds of people. I'm not saying everybody's all working together, though they could be, I don't know. There's a great podcast about this called Radicalized, if you want to listen to it. This guy, Jim Stewart, he's been um, investigating it and uh, the people he podcasts with, Heidi Kuda, they've both done some really interesting writings about this. Now, why does this worry me about this eclipse? Because we have this quincunx between Jupiter and Mars to Hygieia and Scorpio, which is re reproductive rights. It's also all in aspect as well to Black Moon Lilith and Ceres in Cancer. And Cancer is the sign of safety and security and protection. Black Moon Lilith was the original woman who was basically thrown out of Eden for not submitting to the male. It kind of feels like um, the divine feminine is under attack again on this new moon. And, um, you know, I, I think they said that the Supreme Court may um, release their um, final decision about Roe versus Wade in June. Now, the worrying thing as well that I see in all of this, with this of being endings, beginnings, kind of got this kind of quite attack kind of feel to it and change of direction, which we might not particularly like, is uh, this, that somebody mentioned on this radicalized podcast that if you go back to the originalist con constitution, which is what these Supreme Court justices do, women did not have the right to vote. Um, amendments can be overturned. None of, um, no women's rights were in the original constitution. Women are not even mentioned. So um, mm, uh, I'm not saying it's definitely gonna go that way, but um, uh, you know, there's, they make a good case for it on the Radicalized podcast. Now then, the good side of this new moon, to my mind, regarding all of this and regarding how we are in our own lives, is that our perspectives can be changed, our eyes opened, if you like, and our minds changed, and how we deal with it can shift and move forward. 
And one thing that gives me a great deal of hope about this is that um, the closest aspect to this Gemini new moon is a trine to Chariclo in Aquarius. Now, Chariclo is, um, is, was the wife of Chiron. She's a nymph and she, she was a tutor and a, a kind of weaver of stories and space holder um, for the gods and goddesses, I think. She, I think she was actually kind of companion tutor, whatever, to the gods and goddesses in the myth. Now, astrologically, she really holds space for our healing. And one thing that really does kind of give me some hope is that Chariclo is going retrograde. Um, she's at eight degrees um, on this new moon, and she is eventually going to go back over the south, the south node of the USA again, which is at six degrees Aquarius. She is giving us in the USA a chance to write a new story here you know to pressure perhaps I just, the, the Democrats that seem to manage to do nothing to fight this rising um, authoritarianism and control and property ownership kind of oligarchical kind of reign that is really being allowed to take hold um, she is holding space for us to kind of wake up and smell the coffee and understand, which is very Gemini, and say we must do something about this, like stack the courts with um, more liberal judges so that the Supreme Court has a better balance and, and really kind of stop allowing these, this oligarchical energy that um, is kind of represented by uh, Peter Thiel, um, Elon Musk, um, you know, um, Zuckerberg, or people like that, who really just want to do what they want and have complete control in very kind of libertarian fashion. So no apologies for getting political. I did say on my um, Facebook page that I had had some awarenesses in the betwixt eclipse um, um, portal if you like that um, I was going to have to be even more political because of what's going on and um, there's a real opportunity in this to wake up and change what we're doing and change how we think about what we're doing if we want to fight this um, move that's happening kind of globally all right now, other things um, going on in this chart are that the nodes are still at 22 degrees on, on this new moon. And now the, the nodes do not actually move from that degree. Now, if you remember, the nodes stay at the same degree during the eclipse portal for some time. That's because the new and full moons near the, the nodal axis of, of, of what an eclipse is. Um, they, they, they appear to stand still for ages and the nodes are not going to move back to uh, 20 or move off the 22 degree mark until, let me have a look. So we have a new moon, sorry, a full moon coming up on June 13th, 14th. Moon opposing. Um, yeah June the 14th early on June the 14th and right after that the nodes will um, I think it's on the 18th yeah on the 18th the nodes finally move off that 22 degree mark things are really going to change and that um, new moon that full moon that's coming up on June the 14th is at 23 degrees Sagittarius um, to 23 Gemini. That's more change. That's truths being really revealed. Um, so I'm not gonna go to the full moon yet, but what I'm gonna suggest is that this new moon and the cycle up to June the 14th is a really important period for changing our perspective and our ideas and really fighting for new ideas. 
Um, and this is globally, you know, how can we fight this rising authoritarianism? How can we uh, really open our eyes and our ears and listen and see what's really going on? Because how can we kind of get behind the propaganda? I'd suggest listening to podcasts like Radicalized um, for a start to do this. So, um, yeah, no, no apologies for getting quite political. Um, women's um, rights and then the rights of that will mean that will mean the rights of um, LGBTQ and black people as well will be taken away if we allow this to get um, to take hold. Hard, hard fought for rights. Women's rights seem to be the easiest ones to go for because they were um, not even codified into law and they're not, um, um, well, Roe versus Wade is not an amendment to the constitution, but amendments can be amended. So um, I take this seriously. We're in kind of very dangerous times. Um, I tend to, I've tried perhaps to mm, smooth those of these things a little bit in the past uh, on my podcasts and things by being all like, yeah, you could create your own life. You can make it wonderful. Well, sometimes we've got to get a bit real about what's going on in the world um, and be forewarned and forearmed so that we can actually fight what's going on and um, make the change and the, the new beginnings after the endings, something that's more in alignment with what we, um, what we desire. And it's that trying to share a in Aquarius that does give me hope because she is holding space for healing. She is giving us the chance to really heal these things. And Aquarius is the more the sign of the people, the humanitarianism, doing things for the greater good of everybody. So mm, let's hope. <laughs> We, we've got a fight on our hands, I'm afraid, so I hate to say. So before I read symbols, and, and may, I might pull another card or two at the end, because, uh, you know, I'm kind of getting this nudge that, you know, the change, you, know, you might need a little bit more guidance moving forward from the change. But really, uh, in a nutshell, the astrology is about, um, you know, changing your perspective and changing your ideas and your mind about what will work and, and really kind of um, moving forward with the new ideas. Okay, hmm. right. So before I read the symbols, please subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to check out the Venus Enchantment community like my Patreon and give the video a thumbs up. So I'm gonna read the Sabian symbol first. So an airplane performing a nosedive, hmm, reminds me of the tower card. Hmm. Um, the superior ability to challenge nature and play with, um, and play with danger. Through the controlled use of mental powers, man is able to challenge the most basic force in nature, gravitation. He enjoys playing with it as a lion tamer with his violent, violent animals, but what he challenges is within himself as well as outside. Gravitation is the universal binding force of the material world. By challenging it, man prepares himself to pierce beyond the physical and to reach higher realms of existence. He may lose the struggle, but that prospect makes the effort more exciting. He might gain immortality. Okay, I'm, I'm going to substitute man for human or human rather for man everywhere. Okay, so through the controlled use of mental powers, humans are able to challenge because <laughs> we're not taking away women's rights in here, right, as well. So um, this is really mind versus matter or humans will against the fate that gravitation so aptly symbolizes. So this kind of takes me back to this card. You know, the tower falling really is kind of this nosedive and the endings that I'm speaking of and the danger that we have coming into this 
um, this period, to be quite honest, you know, and we have to have mind over matter, really, or will over fate, we have to say no, we're not just going to accept that this is just our fate, and that we can roll over to what's happening in the world. Okay. Right, the, um, <coughs> excuse me, the Chandra symbol for the new moon. A young woman notices the handsome man has fangs. Now, isn't that one interesting? Blows of fate, acts of God, abrupt awakenings to what was suspected but naively denied. You become drastically aware of all that was hidden and jump to conclusions. The gathering of events to prove a point, to generate a change, to draw it all out. Curiosity, probing. <clears throat> Excuse me, just having a water. <coughs> Yet as well, casual oblivion and riding high in euphoric assumptions. Setting yourself up for turnarounds, epiphanies, metanoia the leap over the edge into the dark from the light that reveals the other side of life can generate cynicism and negative feedback loops by the implication that behind every shining wonder there lies its reverse shadow an image the mind proving itself right and falling down its own hole so that's a real caution. We are really going to see what's going on here. And I'm starting to see by listening to the podcasts I've mentioned. And, um, you know, if you're not in alignment politically with me, you might want to stop following the podcast because I am going to speak about this because I think we are in very dangerous times um, as as um human beings, um, allowing the old systems of oligarchy, authoritarianism and control to come back in at all levels, and that sexually, racially, and, um, and just every level, okay. So I'm just gonna look at the symbols also through um, um, John Sandbach's website, he originally, channeled the um, Chandra symbols and he rewrote the Sabian symbols. So I'm just going to read you his symbols for this new moon because I think they're important. So the Omega symbol is magic glasses which allow one to read a secret text. We have to look into the subtext of all of this that's happening. So um, uh, doo -doo. He says, this is the degree angel is Yabamiya, recognizing design beneath disorder and alchemy and transformation. That takes me back to that tower card again. He says, things in the physical realm can often seem very unclear, impenetrable. Sometimes just a slight change of attitude or viewing things from a different angle or with a new set of beliefs can cause what is happening to become clear and legible. You are a natural interpreter and so can help others to understand what is going on through your unique way of seeing. So the Chandra symbol is a young woman notices the handsome man has fangs. He says, in both of these symbols, something new is perceived that wasn't before. This degree has highly unique perceptions and so can offer a new and different perspective on many things. It's especially aware of any dangers afoot and of hidden motives that others harbor. It may be though that this degree's perceptions are not accepted by others, other people maybe because, because others are in denial or possibly because these perceptions reveal subconscious motives that the person is not aware of, or maybe for other reasons as well. And so in some contexts, it might be better to keep those insights to oneself until the time or the context is right to reveal them. Well, um, I think the time is right. But if it applies for other things for you in your own life of 
kind of you know seeing things that seeing things beneath the disorder and recognizing the design and patterns in your own life there may be an argument to wait for some reason if it feels right so but he does say there's also the danger here of jumping to the wrong conclusions as to the meaning and nature of what one perceives or of misinterpreting data or projecting onto it one's own fears and desires. Uh, the Pleiadian symbol is a pter pterodactyl soaring to get a better look at the stars. That's, I'm just gonna let you kind of think of that. So um, I am actually, I would normally call it a day after this, um, but I'm gonna say, expect my uh, Chandra sim, my, not Chandra symbol, my podcast to talk about these current affairs. I don't really see them as politics. Um, I see them as current and social affairs. The problem is that we are moving into this, uh, we've got Saturn in Aquarius, we've had this Saturn Uranus square, which is almost exact again later this year. We have this battle between um, uh, futuristic kind of liberation, more egalitarian, more equal society versus um, the shadow of Aquarius, which can be really authoritarian. And we have some choice in which way it's going in my perspective, from my perspective, some free will. So, you know, all of this is kind of in the stars. It could go either way. I, I never think they're entirely predicted. And I kind of think that we, um, who want women to have their own autonomy and if we want black people to have their own or autonomy as well and equal rights and LGBTQ people, we have to really see what's going on here. And we have to see that this is a gradual erosion of rights globally. The authoritarians, the oligarchs just want everything to themselves. and. And in some respects, this is not a left or right issue. This is just a social control issue. So, so a couple of cards. So what am I going to ask? Okay. And I, I want another message about the beginnings coming from this new moon, about the change perspective. What do we need to know? about this new moon, nine degrees Gemini. Okay. Mm. Okay, and good hope, yeah. So the first card we got was the devil. And that's kind of what bedevils us. Oh, sorry, I held it upside down. I have, did get it the right way up. This is the Capricorn card. This is our institutions. And this is kind of like, how can we play with this to turn it all on its head? How can we change this? Uh, you know, this is last kind of dealing with kind of mirth that what bedevils us. And, and this is kind of a, quite a hopeful card in my my perspective particularly in this deck because look at this um you know jaunty jaunty uh, little devil here with the tower kind of going up to heaven and kind of the people down here so let's have a look 15 what did i have to say about this in my book well this is um we're going to get restrictions addictions fears shadow and limiting beliefs However, this is our fears are bedeviling us. This is saying, um, suggest blocks, limiting beliefs, restrictions really caused by fears. So this is really saying that we, we're allowing our own blocks and restrictions and thinking we can't to stop us from bringing the change that we want to see. Then we have the Four of Wands, which is a very stable card, actually. And this is Venus in Aries, where Venus is right now. And I like this card more because this is a wheel. This is stability. We can all kind of pull together 
if you like, into the middle to really bring some stability in, to bring some abundance, to bring some community, to bring some celebration and some joy. This is really, uh, you know, kind of Aries. I am not going to let this stop me coming together and creating this stability and harmony. And then we get the wonderful Queen of Wands at the end, which is one of my favorite cards of all. Look at this. I mean, uh, this. Um, if you're if you're um, listening on the Audible, the Queen of Wands in the Toth deck that I use is this really powerful woman has transformed and um, raised herself up to the throne. But she has one hand on her leopard with his spots on to remember where she came from. I kind of feel that the divine feminine will win out in the end because we will be able to change our perspective. So I hope that gives you a little bit more hope. It doesn't look like a very friendly new moon to my mind. And I'm kind of, you. Know, the only other thing I can think of really when I look at the new moon um, is some potential for negotiations perhaps um, um, globally and um, you know regarding um, the problems that we have and perhaps wars that we have and so on and so forth. But really, I think this is about communication and interpretation and perceptions. And so we have to see how we can change people's perceptions to realize that we do not have to let what's happening in our world happen. So for now, um, it's goodbye from Louise. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell. And then you'll get the um, immediate notification for when I upload the full moon episode and subsequent episodes because 23 degrees Sagittarius, that's going to be a big full moon too. So you don't want to miss that one. All right, much love.